Second Chronicles 20. Now, I'll let you know about what's happening. Jehoshaphat is being attacked from all sides. He's the king of Judah. There's no way out. Amen? Amen. There's no physical way out. Many times in our lives, there's no physical way out. Amen? And in verse 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping him. What were they doing? Worshiping him. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Do we do that today? Amen. So they rose early in the morning and went out in the wilderness of Tekoa. And they, as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be what? Established. That means follow him. Follow what he's saying. And you're going to be what? Established. Believe in his prophets, the words that are being released at that time. And you shall what? Prosper. How many of y'all want to be established? How many of y'all want to prosper? Okay, well then here's, here's your answer. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So they went out before the physical, didn't they? This was called spiritual warfare. It's, it's weapons of praise. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Oman, Moab, Mount Sira, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Oman and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sira and utterly killed and destroyed them. These were their enemies that God brought confusion in their camp, and they ended up destroying one another because of praise and worship. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sira, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. God allowed this to happen. Amen? Again, Jehoshaphat, the name Jehoshaphat means Yahweh has judged. That's his name. He was the king of joy to praise and, and worship warfare. Was brought forth from the praise of the earth. And today it's increasing all over the world. There is more praise going up to the Lord than ever before. And we see right now, you know... And there are individuals that are, have converted, the, those who have converted souls began to worship God because, because it's increasing. Everyone that's being converted now, getting saved now, that becomes a worshiper, it's increasing and it's spreading more and more to the world. All over the world. People are praising and worshiping like never before. Never before. King David had praise and worship 24 hours a day. That's what protected his place. There was more praise and worship now going up before the Lord and before the Lord's throne than ever before. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing on the earth. Why? Because God is ambushing our enemies. He's causing them to battle against each other. I call this a time of Jehoshaphat. And this is what we're in right now. But there is a place we call position of victory. Everyone say position of victory. Because this is what the Lord told me. He says, listen, position yourself. We've heard this before. Position yourself where? In the spirit to what? Worship. See, worship is what gets you in position. You can't get in position without worship. Why? Because it's the presence of God comes and gets us in position. When people lack worship and praise, they begin to drift from position. Amen? Go to Psalm 7. So what we're seeing right now is God is judging the wicked in the world. 
So every time you praise and worship, God's ambushing your enemy. Position of victory. How many want position of victory? You want victory in everything, don't you? And we, we want to be able to give glory to God in every victory that happens. Let's speak it together. Verse 6. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. So the congregation of the people should surround you. For their sakes, therefore, return on high. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Oh, and let the wicked of the wicked come to what? An end. But establish the just. For the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. My defense is of God, who saves the upright in heart. God is just, is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword. He bends his bow and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked things, the wicked brings forth iniquity. Yes, he conceives trouble and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out. And has fallen into the ditch which he made. His trouble shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come upon his own crown. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Again, judgment against the wicked. Now in this judgment, there's, there's a battle going on. Amen. There's a war going on. And everybody knows this. And in this, it's a physical war. It's a mental war. It's an emotional war. It's a biological war. We see chemical warfare. That's what this epidemic is about. There's an ec ec economy, ec and whatever. There's a media warfare. There's technology, artificial intelligence. There's military, economic. That's that word. I knew I had it in there somewhere. And there's spiritual warfare. Amen. So in this, God is judging all areas. And he's bringing judgment on them right now. Again, it starts in a spiritual unseen realm to manifest. Then this is what the enemy always wants to do. He wants to control the minds and the wills of souls. Unconverted souls are easily manipulated and they can become possessed with demonic spirits. But praise and worship is the key to the position of victory. It is the position of victory all the time. It's called the Song of Deliverance. Amen? John 4. So what you're seeing in the world, all over the world, no matter what the media says, hello, because the media is nothing but prophets of Baal. No matter what the media says, God is judging all the wickedness. You know, it's pretty amazing because even right now when everyone wanted to put sanctions on Russia because it's always Russia, Russia, Russia. Amen. And the UN, which is corrupt. So there were countries that refused to put sanctions on Russia. And you got to remember that the United States is still a major hub of wickedness. Amen. But it's being exposed right now. Unfortunately, the governments that are still ruling it are wicked. And all, the, all of these countries that refuse to approve the sanctions on, the UN is attacking. So you got Russia, you got China, you got Zimbabwe, and there's other countries that are refusing to put these sanctions on Russia. Because what's Russia doing? Russia is being used by God to dismantle major hubs of wickedness. Remember, God can use wicked against wicked, can't he? Remember, they were killing each other. By what? The praise and worship that's going up from the body of Christ. Because we're in a Jehoshaphat moment, man. It's global. It's all over. It's happening. 
And what did the enemy try to do? He tried to prevent individuals from assembling and churches from coming together. Why? Because if you drive through church, there ain't no worship. I saw a lot of drive through. You remember the old days when you went to the uh, movie theaters and you put the microphone in your window? For some of us that might remember that. <laughs> it was the excitement as a young kid. Oh, let's go to the movies. Yes, outside. You'd watch a big screen. You paid to go sit in your car <laughs> and hook up. You know? But again, in, in, in all this is what's happening right now. If it wasn't, remember, we're the restrainers. If it wasn't for the body of Christ praising and worship, there wouldn't be confusion in Amy's camp. God wouldn't be doing what he's doing right now. But he's causing these things to happen because he still has control and always will have control and has the last say of everything. Amen? Oh, happy days. Uh, John 4, verse 7. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water where Jesus was. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then a woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who, is, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? Because he was at Jacob's well. Who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. This is physical. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into what? Eternal life. And a woman said to him, Sir, give me some of this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw again. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the guy you're sleeping with right now, you know, isn't so good either. And the one whom you know you have now <laughs> is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. So what was he trying to do? He was trying to get her to a place of repentance. So what? So she could receive this living water. And he said, well, you've spoken truly. And the woman said to her, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where you ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. Now again, the word spirit means breath. Amen? You know, you get a lot of people, well, I worship God in this and I worship. Well, listen, you better worship God and praise and worship. That's where true worship is. It's in spirit. It's in breath. And again, the worship is what brings living water of eternal life and power to an individual. It's through worship. Don't get me wrong. Reading your word is wonderful. Speaking your word is great. But there isn't anything greater than a person's presence. Again, I always, now how would you explain this? You do it like this. Jesus writes you a letter. Amen. This is his living word. He, these are letters from Jesus Christ. And all the testimonies that he's done. Everything in here is about what he's done. What he's doing. It gives us wisdom and power and understanding. But the presence of God is different. Does everybody get it? Without God's presence, this letter will not become alive. That's why the word says the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. The, the spirit will bring life to the letter. Amen? So without the spirit, there's no life to the letter. It just becomes seed. So if you want to fight the devil, you better fight him with the sword of the spirit because you can't feed him. You will not defeat him with seeds. You throw a handful of seeds at him instead of the sword of the spirit. It's two different things. Amen? 
Psalm 102. Position of victory. Psalm 102 verse 18. This will be written for the generation to come. That a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. We're that generation. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven the Lord viewed the earth. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To release those appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. He weakened my strength in a way. He shortened my days. Are the days shortened? Amen. I said, oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. For your years are without all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. The children of your servants will continue, and their descendants will be established before you. Amen. We're that generation to utilize the weapon of praise. Amen. John 9. Position of victory. Position always has to always do with divine order. Everything that is in divine order, things in your household, in your temple, things are in divine order, desires are in divine order, things are in divine order. You have a routine that's associated with divine order that you do. That's what keeps us in position. You must be disciplined to maintain that divine order. Amen. John 9, 18. Let's speak it together. It says, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked him saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him and he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said to him, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered him, I told you already, and you do not listen. Why do you not want to hear it again? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you always want to become his disciple? Do you also want to become his disciples? Boy, they must have really ticked him off. Then they reviled him and they said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. And the man answered and said to them, why, this is marvelous. <laughs> this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he's from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Now here's a man preaching to them. That was now his eyes are open. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do nothing. They answered and said to him, you are completely born in sins, and you are teaching us. And they cast him out. <laughs> Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, who is he? Lord, that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he 
who is now talking to you. <laughs> then he said, Lord, I believe. And what did he do? He worshipped him. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore you, your sin what? Remain. So he said, you are blind, homie. So what does he say? We, he will not hear the prayers of his sinners until what? A person comes to what? Repentance. That means turn away. But he hears the prayers of worshipers. Psalm 22. You know, when we were in the world, we were constantly looking for fulfillment. Never realizing it was God's presence that was the fulfillment. Not drugs, alcohol, pills, or sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and whatever. But see, that's how the enemy plays. He especially plays in the area of medications and stuff. Because a doctor prescribes it it's because it's legal. It's okay to take. But not in the eyes of God. There are certain things God is saying, do not do. Amen? Remember, pain pills don't cure you. They deceive you. And I'm not saying that sometimes it's needed. Especially a person has surgery or something to that degree. I wouldn't want to be awake while they did surgery on me, that's for sure. They need to give me an anesthetic or hit me with a hammer, knock me out. But again, there are certain things that are used for specific things, but there's limitations. There's boundaries to everything. Some people look for excuses just to get medicated and not even realize it. Psalm 22, verse 22. Let's speak it. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of what? The assembly. Are we in the assembly? I will what? Praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. And all you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live for whatever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. And those who go down to the dust shall bow before him. Even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to the people who will, who will be born. That he has done this. Everything that you're seeing right now that's going on in the world will be declared to the next generation. The victory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise and worship in the assembly of the saints is warfare. Psalm 149. We give honor to the Lord. And while we're praising and worshiping, we're actually warfaring. While well, God is touching us, refreshing us, he's doing his thing. Amen. You do your thing. Seek him with all of your heart. Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Verse 1. What does it say? Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. And his praise in the what? Assembly in the saints. Gathering. That's why the word says forsake not to gather. And that's what the enemy succeeded on. Preventing the body from gathering. That's why a big gap came. 
That's why the enemy was able to take a little bit more ground. But now that the bodies are reassembled again, they're beginning to lose ground. Let Israel, let true ministries rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a dance so it's okay to dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? To execute the vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people. To bind their kings in, with chains. In other words, we have the power to bind and loose their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise so who's doing the execution in the of God's judgments? We are. How does it begin? Worship. Worship. Praise the Lord. All execute judgment is given to the worshipers of Christ upon the wicked forces of evil. That's pretty amazing. Now that's marvelous. Amen. Second Thessalonians 2. Well, you know, Pastor, I, I read my Bible. I, I, I pray, but I just can't break out. I can't break through. And I ask them, when's the last time you've been worshiping the Lord? Well, if they got to go well, it's too long. <laughs> well, well, you know, I've been busy. I've been working a lot. Yeah. I need to pay bills. Why, the devil got you in debt? Anything to prevent getting in God's presence. How many of all healings in God's presence? There isn't anything that God can't do if you allow him to. Just allow him to. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. Let's speak it please. Now brethren concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him we ask you. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter or by media or if from us as though the day of Christ has come. Let no one what? Deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So we are in the falling away right now, but the son of perdition hasn't been revealed yet, even though we know that he's already here. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself as, as he is God. We haven't seen that yet. Do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things. And, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. Who's restraining? We are. Through what? Praise and worship. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. We are, the he here is the body of Christ with the Holy Spirit. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. Not Biden, not Clinton, not Obama. Hello. Not only, but uh, I'm not saying that Satan's not using them, amen, because they are worshipers of, the, of Satan. And so we see here that the lawless one, all behind all of this is the working of Satan and his regime and his kingdom with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception. Do we see that right now? Unrighteous deception? Yeah. With all perversion and everything else. Among those who will what? perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? Saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion. That's coming next. In fact many of them are still in it right now and have entered strong delusion. Some people will never come out. That they should believe in the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Again, we see this happening right now. 
We are the restrangers of, of, before full-blown wickedness takes over when we leave. These individuals have been seduced by deception. The Bible says that many will fall away from deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Amen. But God is doing an intervention by our praise and worship and warfare. There's a, a what I want to say, a reawakening event that's happening right now. God is raising up warriors all over. People are praising and worshiping. They're, they're laying down their old man. And they're picking up the sword of the Spirit with high praises of God in their mouth. And Matthew 21, in verse 15. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, and the children crying out in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of, of David, they were indignant. In other words, they were angry. And they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to him, yes. Have you, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have what? Perfected what? Praise. <laughs> then he left them and went out into the city of Bethany and he lodged there. Perfected the what? Praise. Out of the what? Babes. Why? Remember, we enter into the presence of God as children. Praise God. Our praise brings confusion, irritation, jealousy, and anger <laughs> into their midst. First Thessalonians 4. Verse 1. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, not like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to what? Holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man. But God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Again one of the things that we need to possess in these temples in the area is peace. No matter what's going on around you, you've got, I mean, you got to possess peace. Amen? There's another thing you must possess. Patience. Because one of the things the enemy is always trying to do is get you to move quickly. Amen? And then you make a wrong decision, something, whatever it is. We possess peace. We possess patience. We've got to possess our emotions. Amen? We've got to possess our desires. We've got to possess lust. What? To maintain a position of victory. If there's not position, if you're not possessing, someone else is. Amen? If you're not possessing parts of your members, your thoughts and everything else, someone else is. Hallelujah. Go to Revelation 11. It's how we maintain a position of victory. Revelation 11. Revelation 11, verse 1. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. Those who what? Worship there. But leave out the court, which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,160 days clothed in sackcloth. This is three and a half years. Now he says, I will give power to my two witnesses. Now I'm going to, these are going to be two physical witnesses that will show up in Israel. Okay. And this will be during the tribulation as it begins. Now these two witnesses also represent the two witnesses that showed up with Jesus in the transfiguration, which was who? Elijah and Moses. 
They were both given great authority to do things. But Elijah and Moses also represents those who are alive in Christ, amen, and those who have died in Christ. But it also represents something else. It represents the two wings, the wings of the eagle. And in this, so you have the Israelites, the Jews, and the Christians. Is everybody with me? So in this, he's saying, these are going to be two witnesses. These will be my two witnesses. Many Jews will come to Christ and be witnesses. But these will be the two witnesses that will witness Christ and be an authority. But in that, you and I are still associated and we'll still be here when they're here. Because they'll be expressing in Israel God's power, God's authority as a representation of the two witnesses that were in the transfiguration with Jesus. Is everybody okay? All right. And he says, I'm going to give them power to prophesy. And they will prophesy three and a half years. Verse 4. And these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth. See, fire can proceed from your mouth too. That's why we call fire down and all the places of wickedness locations. There's a prayer in the penetrating prayer book that calls fire down and devours their enemies. Why? Because you and I have been given authority to execute judgment. Can you imagine if the whole body would execute judgment? We wouldn't be in this circumstance. Hallelujah. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. Verse 6, these have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they will have power over waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Oh man, people are going to be ticked off when they come. When they finish their testimony, the beast that this ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them and kill them. Now is God going to allow this? Yes. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those of the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their bodies to be put into the graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another. Because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet. And great fear fell on all those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. It's rapture. And they ascended into the cloud and their enemy saw them. In the same hour... There was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. Again, three and a half years of tribulation, then great tribulation. We and the witnesses, I truly believe, will be caught up at the same time. In Matthew 24. What's going to keep you in position? Worship. Matthew 24, verse 29 says, immediately after tribulation. Now, he didn't say immediately after great tribulation. He said immediately after tribulation. Amen? Of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear where? In the heavens. It doesn't say him about being on the earth yet. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see him, uh, a man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with great sound of a what? Trumpet to fulfill the what? Feast of trumpets. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn the, this parable from the fig tree, which means Israel. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, and you know the summer is near, 
So you also, when you see all these things, know that it's near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you that this generation will by no means pass away until all these things have, come, have taken place. Now, a generation can be from 70 to 80 years. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Now, what does that mean? Israel <coughs> is known as the fig tree. It became a nation in 1948. So you count 80, 80 years from there, so you're close somewhere in there. But is our time perfectly correct? We don't know. Amen. Verse 36. But as that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. For as the days of Noah were also, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Well, what were the days of Noah? The Nephilim race ruled the earth. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that day Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. So after the trip, there'll be a great trip. And this, because during that period of time, the, the Nephilim, the Antichrist race, will have ruled, and they're battling right now. Amen? During the tribulation, Remember, after trib, authority will be given back to them. God will allow the beast to have authority. And, you know, we see right now, look at what's going on with all of its perversion and everything else, the rebellion and lies and witchcraft and deception that's happening. I mean, you can go to schools these days and they practice witchcraft and every other religion, but if you try to bring Jesus in there, they'll throw you out. But that's changing, and it's going to change. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. So we see again, after tribulation, great tribulation will come. It will be known as the days of Noah with all the Nephilim Antichrist race and all this perversion, rebellion, lies, and witchcraft and deception will take over again. The demons will be released from the earth and you're going to see hell on earth like never before. We might, we should see it from heaven. I want to get a front row seat. Anointed popcorn. Hallelujah. First Thess. Hallelujah. Um, chapter 4 and verse 13. Everybody there? Praise God. That's good. I'm not. There we go. Let's speak it together. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Now remember, I want you to remind you that when the, the word said in uh, Matthew that they would see Jesus. Amen? They would see him. He didn't land here yet. His foot didn't touch the earth. They would see him and dispatch his angels. And he would gather his elect. This is known as the rapture. Amen? Why? Because this is mid-trib, isn't it? Now everybody has a difference of the rapture and whatever. It don't matter to me. I could go before, mid, I don't care. As long as I go home. Hallelujah. I'm just sharing with you what I see and, and, and believe in. So we see here again, and he confirms it with in Thessalonians. And, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep or what are dead in Christ, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are asleep in Christ, those who are dead in Christ. Amen? For this we say, we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain here on the earth until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with a trumpet of God, and the dead will rise first. So, you know, there may be people who are buried. Those graves are going to be opened. Those have been cremated. Their bodies will be restored. Verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. That's called rapture. With them in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air, not on the earth. Amen. Remember, when he comes and touches earth, we're with him. 
And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Timothy chapter 1. So we want to stay in position so we don't miss the bus out of here. Amen. It is the position of victory. Verse 12. And I thank Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am a chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all loving long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. This I char this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having what? Faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have what? Suffered shipwrecked, of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexandria, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme me. Faithful, faithful, faithful. You can't be faithful unless you're full of faith. Amen? And you must be full with God's presence to have faith. And I'm going to close in 2 Timothy 2. Verse 1. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What's grace mean? God's plan of escape. You've got to be strong in God's plan of escape. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Yes, yeah, what you've got to ask yourself. Am I faithful to be able to teach others? You, therefore, must endure Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in the athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It's called rules of engagement. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ had the seed of David who was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I do what? I endure all things. In other words, I possess peace. I possess patience. I possess all of these things in this temple in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, and he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenius and Philistus are also this sort who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection has already passed, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Position of victory. We have the choice. God has given us everything. We have the power through the Christ Jesus and the anointing. It's your choice to be Discipline, obedient, and maintain to be an individual that worships the Lord and become a lover of his presence. Amen? That's what separates us. God's presence will always separate you from the world. Always. 
Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. The word that's been imparted to each and every one of us, let it be protected by the anointing. Seal it, Lord, so it grows and bears fruit for your glory and brings to remembrance a thirst and hunger for your presence in everything we do. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. <laughs>